good afternoon people thank you so much uh well uh just two things you need to know about me number one my name is arun nayar and i am a malayali like usual that does not bring any applause from anywhere in the world can we please hear a round of applause to me please thank you so much you realize what you'll just did you'll you just clap because i'm a malayali what is that what is that Number two, uh, as of today, HDFC reminded me that my bank balance is exactly one thousand six hundred seventy-three rupees. So I'm broke. All right, my parents have money. Calm down, and you guys have booked the train ticket back for me, right? So I'm all sorted out. I'm happy to be here in Bellor. It's a lovely place. Uh, it's not top ten in my you know list of places to visit before I die, or top fifty thousand. But uh, <laughs> but you guys have a nice campus. You guys, yeah, you have trees and all that stuff growing. <laughs> uh we we don't see too much of that in bangalore what you'll have 20000 people over here that's ridiculous uh so yes it's it's wonderful uh, to be here i think these guys are the organizers are you know cursing themselves for calling me why did they call me in front of us it gets worse <laughs> anyway uh so uh b- before i started off with you know what i do and how i go about doing what i do uh i just made a f- small presentation uh these are five biggest strategies of the 20th 21st century according to me okay if any of you all are connected with any of these strategies are related it's not my problem please don't take it up with me after this uh how do i change this this is an arrow number 1 pitbull <laughs> if uh if you don't know i have a small sheet of paper here uh so pitbull's real name is actual name is armando cristian perez what you'll do you know that one knows that anyway so pitbull number one on the list of tragedies uh why pitbull uh, do you guys do, do does everyone know who pitbull is first of all you all don't know who pitbull is so it's, it, it's not the dog pitbull i mean the dog is way cuter and everything this guy is just you know he puts his lips to one side and he sings like that. yeah that that's that's basically pitbull so pitbull is someone uh he's also known as mr worldwide mr 305 305 whatever and uh, he keeps traveling from miami to ibiza in his songs that that's basically what he does so he's this man who comes and you know he makes music no not music uh he writes songs not songs uh <laughs> so what he really does is um he speaks he speaks about everything which happens in his life and there's one guy who plays a beat a constant beat i don't know why my hand is moving like this but it it's it's something like that and he makes millions and millions of dollars and he makes people happy now uh, all of us have, most of us have listened to his song uh, i i'm a victim of this too i download his music I, i sometimes download them from itunes which means i pay money for them not not all his songs uh, okay all his songs <laughs> but uh lesson learned he makes people happy he makes money all right that was pitbull number 2 the bangladesh cricket team there's a very specific and obvious reason why i have them there these ladies and gentlemen this cricket team is the best thing to have happened to cricket in all its time the bangladesh cricket team is the reason other countries have boosted their self esteem to such high levels it's not funny this team has been here for centuries and eons and they have been so consistent there are other cricket teams like zimbabwe and canada who will surprise you with the occasional win but not bangladesh no they know what they're there for and it's ridiculous it's been years and you know uh, whenever a uh, a cricketing nation say india is down on morale and self esteem and has been on losing streak all the board of control needs to do is call up bangladesh we're ready bring it on and bangladesh goes yes maybe this time and whole of india goes yes now we are back so that's what they do and that according to me is disaster number 2 the god particle that's lot of uh, uh, does everyone know what the god particle is what's the guy higgins bosom bosom what what is it okay all right <laughs> so uh yes number 3 uh, now i don't have any beef with uh higgins mr higgins sorry or uh, the god particle as it is uh, but uh, the only thing if at all i might uh, speak about it is the word the, the term used for the invent uh, the, the discovery of this particle the god particle when i heard it first and when i saw this on television 
I thought my life was sorted after they discovered the God particle. I thought everything was good. When I woke up in the morning, I thought I'd be served freshly brewed coffee and my grandfather's farts would smell of strawberries and all that stuff. There wouldn't be any traffic, no pollution. But it didn't do that, no? So, my so the God particle came out and, you know, I tried researching and I tried finding out why this particle is called the God particle. I still haven't got a clear answer to this. Uh, and uh, Paul's looking at me. Uh, <laughs> and I, I know no beef with the scientists also. But that is number three anyway. Number four is the word epic. Yes, all of you people know. You know who used it, you guys in the back row there. All of y'all use it, don't y'all? So, uh, once again, I will go to my piece of paper. This is according to some, one of these uh, Oxford Dictionary or some other college in Bangalore, I don't know. Uh, pertaining to a long poetic composition, usually centered upon a hero, in which a series of great achievements are narrated. Now, today's day. Macha, how was last night, da? Epic! <laughs> it's what happens. It's ridiculous, you idiots. Not everything is epic. I mean, last night can only be epic if you fought a war, killed a few zombies, took a ship all the way across the world, came back and then said, yes, I had an epic night. But did that happen? No. You had a couple of drinks, you passed out and you woke up in the morning. And that is epic. So yes, please, from today, make it a conscious decision not to use this word. You in the yellow shirt. <laughs> Just joking. Yes, number five. Arnav goes to Ami. Now, now, now you can have a round of applause, please. <laughs> to anyone who's uh, uh, fondly familiar and uh, you know likes this person, I'm really sorry about that. I have no beef with Arnab as well. I mean, I like him. He's the reason, you know, uh, he brings a lot of happiness like all the other things in you know, the disaster list, he too brings a lot of happiness because I would never watch Arnab Goswami delivering the news. He doesn't deliver news, right? He he just tells people what to do. But uh, I would watch times now for the entertainment factor that he brings in. And uh, so, so often I've switched on the TV and wanted this guy to shut up, but then I realized, what am I talking about? That's the only time I'm ever going to watch the news. They say news to the mind is like sugar to the body. And... This guy is trying to change that. So hats off to him. Yeah. Uh, I told you guys uh, why I'm here. And over the years, I've been thinking about life as it is and, you know, how we've evolved as humans from when we were toddlers to what we are now and to what we will be in the future. And uh, I saw that, you know, uh, humans depreciate not just physically, but mentally and in a lot of other ways as we grow older. And I started noticing it with my family and with people around me. And it was quite sad. So I have a couple of slides. Uh, these are just images I downloaded off Google. Google images. Yes, we have grown, but how have we grown? All right, this, this is your average toddler, smiling, happy about life. Uh, he or she, he, know, he knows that all he needs to do is poop a couple of times, uh, you know, have his baby food or whatever babies eat, and uh, sleep. That's all he does. No worry in life. Then you move on. Uh, I have not intentionally taken a picture of a child working in a mine. I'm sorry. All the naturalists and all looking at me. What are you doing in life? No, this is also from Google. So, uh, this is a picture of a boy, uh, say about the age of what, seven, eight, I guess. Uh, also with a smile, probably. Uh, he's, he's doing work which, uh, you know, which is strenuous, which is physically strenuous, and which he shouldn't be doing in the first place. But we still see the innocence over here. Next, you move on to the age of, let's say, Let's say 30, all right? This guy has a smile, but you know he's screwed up inside his head. If you watch closely, there's lots going on. He has to file his tax returns. He is partially constipated and all that stuff. We move on. We move on to this guy and this fellow's seen it all. This fellow's seen it all. He's pissed off with his wife or his husband, whoever. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's having issues which are unexplainable. And he just discovered something growing from his body. So, this is, say, at the age of what, 55, 60. And this is, doesn't apply just to Indians. Everyone around the world, you see this, you see people, you know, you see smiles depreciating. You see uh, people looking more angry, especially we Indians. We love to be angry. We love frustration. 
and you know we don't we don't we don't think of we born sympathy from people when we show anger and frustration right and this is something i have seen i've not this is not downloaded this is seen and if you're really pissed off this is how you look this is <laughs> this is the pinnacle i don't know why i hate this guy so much <laughs> you can read my blog you'll probably find out but uh yeah so so, so that is you know the whole uh conception of punchline i started noticing people and i saw that the innocence was lost and i thought that maybe we need an induction of whatever it is humor laughter in whichever way possible and because it's sad because it's sad that we can't make ourselves amused what i used to do even a couple of years back is i tried amusing myself in front of the mirrors uh in in front of the mirror by 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 saying stupid things saying funny things and i used to laugh but uh facts will tell you and statistics will tell you that you are more likely to laugh in a crowd of you know 30 times more than you would laugh alone when you're in a crowd right so you guys here you know witnessing something would be funnier than you sitting alone and watching something on your televisions or listening to someone so that's the whole conception behind you know why punchline came i want to quickly go so this brought me to the conclusion that yes we needed an in induction of laughter in our lives which is not a bad thing it's fine that we have forgotten you know uh the the the, the cornerstones of innocence but what we need now is a reason to be happy a reason to laugh every day which you know which is why punch uh, punchline was formed in the first place the law of diminishing marginal utility how many people remember the law of diminishing marginal utility no one no just one person this is something we studied in economics in what 11th and 12th and i mean we didn't give a rats as well like, ah what talk about it until the teacher told us that you know you have one chocolate all good two chocolates three chocolates five chocolates and we realized because we connected it with chocolates and then i realized this was what was happening to me in my day to day life i used to watch a lot of stand up comedy whether it be on television or whether it meant me going outside my house and seeing comedians perform but what i saw was in india we had a limited number of people we had maybe about 50 60 people doing this and i kept going for their gigs and every time i went and saw the same person he was le- he was less funny than the last time i saw this and this kept happening to me and i was upset and the question which came to my mind was do we have people to make other people laugh and i said yes of course we come across people who are funny every day you guys people sitting somewhere in the audience i'm sure you all you know you'll have friends who make you laugh you'll have colleagues which make you laugh or whoever it is but these people would you ever come out and make a bunch of people laugh was the million dollar question and we said why not and that's when we started punchline comics now punchline comics started off in bangalore and we said we this was an experiment to see whether people were willing to go out of their comfort zone believe me ladies and gentlemen stand up comedy is one of the hardest professions you will ever see standing on a stage and making a bunch of people laugh who are more often than not too arrogant to uh to you know to to to, to give themselves to your jokes uh it's very hard but we found people from all walks of life from different cities there were people who traveled from the north to bangalore there there was one person who traveled from calcutta to chennai when we did the show in chennai and there were people coming down and say we were just, we just waited for this opportunity I mean we used to crack jokes when in family over the dinner dinner table but we want to be doing this at a different level and that's what punchline tries doing and try to do and it was so nice because we received so many contestants every city we went to and i just recently got an email from someone who participated in my hyderabad show uh, a very uh, unassuming character um, a lovely person a tel guide from hyderabad and uh, he didn't know the the language too well and it turned out that he did come out for one of our shows he didn't do very well he, he pretty much embarrassed himself which is okay because in stand up comedy if you make a fool of yourself people are still going to laugh and that's what you want right so uh so this guy his name is arun kumar i remember very well he sent me an email a couple of days back saying thank you sir i just won the national laughter challenge which was so lovely to hear because it meant that he let go of his inhibitions came out and he did something he thought he could do and it turned out so well for him and these are the stories we like to hear when part of punchline because we know everyone everyone you know likes to laugh we are here to find those people to tickle your funny bone 
everyone's a comedian? No, not true. Uh, you you will find people telling you everyone's you know got a comic side himself. It's not true. It's not true. I mean, we, I, I've seen some very non-funny people. <laughs> not Manmohan Singh, but otherwise. So uh, there are people. You know, comedy is something you can't. You you really don't train people with and everything. So uh, we when we fish out people for punchline, we open registrations to everyone. We have a we have a procedure where we shortlist the good comedians, uh, and we put them on stage to see, you know, who's really got the metal to deliver, you know, when stand-up comedy is con concerned. So anyone who tells you everyone can do comedy is a lie, right? That is how I would have wanted it to be. What happened was I started off with, you know, with a lovely profit motive. It happened that it was non-profit. So... <laughs> Which basically means that uh, we found we found people willing to uh, you know uh, to, to come up, come on stage and you know uh, crack a couple of jokes and do stand up, but uh, we didn't find as much of an audience. Yes, it is getting better. It is getting better. But the fact is, I just want to make this clear also that I did not start this with the intention of you know uh, making no money at all. Now I have to do something else also in life. So this goes on. <laughs> just wanted to clear that so that is uh you know everything that is about punchline comics we travel we travel india because we believe that india has incredible potential and we've seen some of the funniest people in our country and believe me ladies and gentlemen these people are not your you know uh, cover of the book funny these people are you know researched comedians who spend a lot of time in order to make you guys laugh so all we request you know audiences who listen to stand up is to come in with an open mind you know, not have uh, inhibitions towards profanity and everything. And I make this a point to tell all my audiences, you know, if, if you are not going to appreciate something, uh, you know, if, if you are sensitive towards religion, towards other things in life, stand-up comedy, you're probably not ready for what stand-up comedy has. But I think that as of now, our nation is ready. Quickly, laughter isn't the best medicine. Actual medicine has a better track record. <laughs> this is a fact. Anyone who tells you laughter will cure everything in life, it won't. But researched statistics will tell you that the more you laugh, and if you take time to crack a joke or allow to be, you know, allow laughter at the cost of someone else, it does actually help you help your immune system and actually does wonderful things to you and your body. It's ridiculous how we, you know, we go in for, you know, I myself practice meditation and different other things, but laughing is such a simple tool. Just don't be close to it. Allow yourself, allow yourself to laugh. If you look stupid while you're doing it, go ahead and look stupid. If someone judges you, well, screw them. That's all we have to say. And we, we keep telling people this. It's a horrible world all of us live in today. It's filled with stress and idiots. Take your time out and laugh. Laugh at these people and more so laugh at yourselves. Thank you. Thank you.